Good morning beautiful souls. How are you all today? I hope you're well. As you can see, I'm indoors. It's another gloomy grey day. Wet. Uh, no gardening today. But you know, that's fine. I'm going to crack on with a load of other things. And one of the things I need to do today is top up some of my cleaning supplies. Most of my cleaning supplies, well, actually pretty much all of them I make myself, or at least I try to when I've got time, which is what I've got today. Occasionally, if I haven't got time, if I'm in a real hurry, I might grab something from the shops. But when I do, I tend to go for, um, for instance, a company called BioD. I really like their stuff. Anyway, when I have got time, I make my own things. And really, it's so, so simple. The whole reason I got into making my own cleaning bits and pieces, if you like, was a few years ago, I made a promise to myself that I was going to try to live without plastic. I tried really, really hard. It's nigh on impossible. But what I do by making my own things, I'm gonna show you everything in a second, don't worry. What I do by making my own things is I massively, massively reduce the amount of plastic I'm using. So that's number one, I'm reducing the amount of plastic. Number two, I'm reducing the amount of chemicals I'm using because a lot of these are very simple, safe, effective chemicals. Everything is a chemical, but they're, it's not, they're not chock full of unnecessary chemicals, let's just say that. And number three, it's so much cheaper to make your own. So the things I'm going to show you today, they're going to work out at half the price, if not even less, than if you were using something readily bought from the shops. So I'm going to show you two things today. One is my fabric conditioner, or I think actually over in North America you call it fabric softener, but it's the thing you use after the wash cycle in the washing machine, just to soften things up a bit, but this has got a double action, I'll tell you that when we come to it. So a fabric conditioner and what I call my bog bombs, <laughs> my lavatory cleaner, or you might like to say toilet cleaner. I was brought up not to say the word toilet because that's a bit rude, um, but I will probably label it toilet in this video because not everybody uses the word lavatory, even though we all use the lavatory. Anyway, so let's crack on. Um, let's do this in two halves. I'm going to show you the fabric conditioner first. I've got all my ingredients. So actually, let me just give you a very quick look at the ingredients I'm going to use today. You'll see how very, very simple it all is. So there we have it. That's all the ingredients I'm using. It's almost as simple as one of my cooking recipes, isn't it? So We'll come to the conditioner in a minute. I'll show you that properly in a second. But essentially all I've got is some vinegar and essential oil. Some more essential oil here. Hydrogen peroxide, citric acid and baking soda. And just look at the packaging we've got arrayed here. Cardboard can go in the recycling or can be composted. Glass bottle, glass bottle, glass bottle. These can all be relatively easily either recycled or reused. The only bits of plastic are the lids. Unfortunately, it's really, really difficult to get away from plastic lids. I have found a company where I, well, two companies, I buy bottles from one company and lids from another um, where I've managed to find metal lids, but that's when I'm doing sort of my bathroom my beauty stuff, I'll talk about that another day. Okay, so dead easy with the ingredients, let's crack on and talk about the fabric conditioner. I think most of us are accustomed to using fabric conditioner at the end of our wash these days. Particularly those of us who live in a hard water area, like I do. Now the thing about hard water, it's called hard water, it's because it contains more minerals than softer water, in particular calcium. Now the thing about calcium is, 
it gets deposited on uh, the calcium from the water gets deposited on pretty much anything it comes into contact with so if you think about that dusty chalky residue you get on your bathroom tiles your shower screen but it's really really obvious in something like your kettle you'll get really quite chunky nasty bits of calcium carbonate deposited inside the mechanism of the washing machine it's really really rubbish for the washing machine um, when it starts to clog up on heating elements whether that's in the kettle or the washing machine it makes the heating element way less effective so you're using more energy it's blocking your tubes etc etc so here's the science bit the calcium in your hard water, it increases the pH of your water to 8.5 or thereabouts. Neutral, absolutely neutral water would be 7. So it's increased it to 8.4, 8.5, beg your pardon, which takes it alkaline. So to combat that, not just in our pipes, but our clothes, everything, we want to combat it with an acid, which is where our good old vinegar comes in. Now I say right from the outset, please do not think your clothes are going to come out of the washing machine smelling like a fish and chip shop. They won't. They actually come out smelling, they just smell of fresh air, they don't really smell of anything. So it's great. So I love to use the vinegar as my fabric um, conditioner, softener, final rinse, however you want to call it because not only is it helping my clothes stay well, but it's also just helping my washing machine. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> you don't by any means have to do this, but as you can see, there's no label on this jar, is there? I think the label's ugly, so I soak it off. Literally, I've just bought a bottle of white distilled vinegar. I've popped it in the bowl of washing up water after my washing up's done soaked the label off and I'm going to put another label on it. Whenever you're using any kind of bottles, when you're recycling or reusing bottles and you're changing it from say if it started out as a drink or a food thing and you're going to change it to a cleaning thing, please, please, please remember to label and label it really clearly so that no one in your household is going to by accident grab this to put it on their food instead of the actual vinegar. The reason I don't want that to happen is because I'm going to add some essential oil to make it smell a little bit sweeter. It really could not be more simple. White distilled vinegar, I've got some lavender essential oil here and I'm just going to add 50 drops. <laughs> this may take some time. Come back in a second. 49, 50. There we go. Done, 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 done. So each time you come to use it, just give the bottle a bit of a shake because the, the oil will sit on top of the vinegar. So give it a really good shake. And I use about the equivalent of about 40 mils as a dose. Um, quite simply for me, I use an egg cup. And now it's time to label it. And years ago, someone gave me this really gorgeous little book of sticky labels, all sorts of sticky labels in there, all sorts of prettiness, gorgeous. So why not have something really lovely in the kitchen cupboard? It doesn't have to be... Um, a, a sort of a boring workaday thing. What am I doing? Fabric, conditioner, there we go. So there can be absolutely no mistake if it's not me going to the cupboard but someone else. Well, it's always going to be me here, isn't it? But like I say, if you live in a household with other people, please, 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 please do make sure that you label everything really, really clearly. So there we go. Dead, dead easy. I mean, really ridiculously easy. What could be more simple? 
I've borrowed from my neighbour as a prop this one I'm not necessarily saying this brand's any better or worse than any others it's just to show the difference in terms of plastic this will actually do about the same number of doses as this but look at all that plastic that's involved there's the actual there's the bottle itself and then there's the there's this kind of sleeve of plastic over it for the illustration all the plastic that's involved with the lid Ugh, yuck grotty and then all that artificial smell it's really overpowering it's horrid I'm not even going to list the ingredients the thing about the ingredients is I can't pronounce them I can't spell them that puts me off so I'm going to stick with vinegar and lavender oil now let's make some bog bombs okay so to make our bog bombs you're going to need some bicarbonate of soda some citric acid some hydrogen peroxide I'm using 9% an essential oil of choice I'm using tea tree because it's a great cleaner but you know it's for the bathroom so if you prefer a sort of a lemony smell or a minty smell use lemon or mint instead and then in terms of equipment I've got my cups and a spoon for measuring a bowl to mix things in and I keep um, a couple of separate utensils purely for my home cleaning makes and then this is the fun bit I also have these I think this is probably for making chocolates I'm not sure these silicone sort of baking sheets and I've got another one here that's got deeper these things are humongously expensive apparently but like with so much else in my life I scored these at a common an hour jumble sale or something I think I got them for 50p each they're great because when you come to tip things out later on when you turn them over and tip them out because they're, they've, they've got a lot of softness and give there's less chance of breaking what you're making if you don't have this sort of thing um, another absolutely perfectly adequate way would be to use a nice cube tray okay let's get making woohoo right so just like when you're baking sorry clank clank put your dry ingredients in first you are going to want whoop la, four cups of bicarb of soda all of these ingredients are really pretty easy to source on the high street. I did have a little trouble the other day finding some hydrogen peroxide, just because normally I would get it from chemists. So if you're in the UK, good old boots do it, but they'd sold out. Otherwise, like I say, all these ingredients are pretty easy to find. I'm making a big, big batch today, so you could just halve these quantities. So four cups of bicarb, then we want, sorry these are so oh, clanky clanky, two thirds of a cup of citric acid. This cup measures a third, so two of these. There's one cup. And there's two cups. Now, I'm going to put the hydrogen peroxide in last because that's the most amount of liquid. But, oh, I'll get this open. I'm now going to add 40 drops of tea tree oil. <laughs> we might be here some time again. such a beautiful clean smell now when you come to add your hydrogen peroxide um, actually just before I add it let me talk a little bit about hydrogen peroxide um, it's a relatively safe thing to use for cleaning its chemical symbol 
we're going to have a little trip back to school now. Its chemical symbol is H2O2. When it breaks down, it breaks down very simply as H2O and O. In other words, one of the O parts separates. H2O, most of us are familiar with, that's water. O, most of us are familiar with, that's oxygen. So it starts out life as H2O2. It's, like I say, it's relatively safe to use. You could do this with your kids. I think they'd have great fun doing it. Obviously, supervise. Now, when I add the hydrogen peroxide, it is going to start fizzing and bubbling a bit. That's perfectly normal. We're going to add it and then get it all mixed in. Quick sticks. So we want four tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. One. Two. It's fizzing. Three. Really fizzing now. Four. Right, let's get that quickly mixed in. It's not going to be sopping, sopping, sopping wet, not by any means. It's more that it's, everything is getting made damp. So give it a really, really thorough mix. It is going to still feel really pretty powdery. And you'll think, what on earth is she doing? But trust me, it works. Oh, this smells great. It's that tea tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say it smells good enough to eat. It's not the sort of thing that smells like you want to eat it. It definitely smells like a cleaning product. Just keep mixing, 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 mixing. It's like very fine um, powder snow. Okay, now the fun begins. Let's now get it into our moulds. So like I say, if you haven't got any of these kind of fancy pants, chalky moulds, um, ice cube mould, that sort of thing. This is the slightly tricky fiddly bit. Get it into one of your moulds and give it quite a hard pressing down. All the excess around the edge, don't worry, because by the time the whole this whole mould thing is full, I'll simply wipe over that. Any that didn't go into a mould, I'll wipe it off, collect it up, and put it into a spare mould. So the idea now is once these um, once these moulds are all filled, do give it a good, good, firm pressing down. Really firm press. I will now leave this all for the rest of the day, possibly even overnight, because they will really dry out and then go quite hard. And when they're at that stage, once they've dried out, gone hard, I'll pop them out of the moulds and then I just pop them into an airtight jar. I'll show you. <laughs> this is the jar I keep mine in. My little label, bog bombs. You can see it's um, there's quite a bit of residue there from the previous load. And then, quite simply, oh, depends. I suppose it depends how much use your lavatory gets. Mine doesn't get a huge amount of use because it's just me. But if your loo is getting a lot of traffic. You might find that you want to pop one of these in each day. You might find that doing it a couple of times a week is enough. For me, I do it about once a week, sometimes twice a week, but that's plenty. And all I do is pop one of these into the loo, let it fizz away for 15 minutes or so. Now, it's not like the loo cleaners you buy from the shops that are yes full of chemicals and nasty stuff um it's not like one of those proprietary ones where you just squirt it at your loo walk away and it does the work for you you do need to have a little bit of elbow grease involved with this method 
so like I say pop it in the loo let it fizz for 15 minutes or so go back and with your brush have a quick scrub simple so so simple right well it's going to take me a while to fill both my trays so why don't you all go off and have a cup of tea while I finish doing this and we'll come back later Well, it's been about four hours since I did the make. It's gotten darker and chillier. Uh, ideally, I would normally leave these overnight and certainly those bigger, deeper ones I made at the end, I will leave overnight. But the little ones in the chocolate mold are just about done enough for me to be able to show you. When you come to take them out, just have a little, a little push and a feel to check but you can see, isn't that a little thing of beauty? It's really quite dry and quite hard now, so that's good enough to take out, pop it in the jar, and, uh, and get using them in the next couple of days. What could be lovelier than a little love heart bomb to put in your bog? <laughs> Brilliant. Like I say, if you don't have these, um, chocolate moulds. <laughs> I've got a little pyramid. If you don't have these um, these fancy pants moulds, ice cube trays, or as you saw with my bigger tray, it's actually a sort of a cupcake, fairy cake type mould. So these little ones, there's enough there to just sort of, I would say, that's your sort of regular clean. Those bigger ones that I made, that's for, if you're only doing it once a week or so, and it's a bit more of a tough clean, chuck a bigger one in. So there we have it. Two super simple, easy makes to do on a bit of a dreary, chilly day with your kids, with your grandkids, whatever. You're going to save a bit of money, have a bit of fun, but more than anything, reduce all of that plastic. Yay! And I was thinking about this, actually, if you are doing it with your kids or grandkids, whether you're a home educator or not, what great stuff to do with the kids and give them a bit of teaching along the way. The thing is, when kids are hands-on and doing stuff and having fun, they don't necessarily realise they're being taught. But I was thinking with this, you know, you can sneak in a bit of science with them. You can sneak in a bit of, you know, sort of environmental studies, looking at resources, world economy. You can go as far as you want, depending on the age of your kids and where they're at. But yeah... Have it go yourself, whether you've got kids around to play with, to do it or not. It's dead easy, it's dead quick, it's dead cheap. Yay, I love it. Right, it's really getting quite chilly now, so I think I need to go and put a big pot of tea on and say cheerio to you all for now. I hope I'll see you all again really soon. Maybe if the weather clears up <laughs> and this cold finally goes, I might even see you in the garden again soon. So until then, whatever you're getting up to, have fun doing it, just enjoy being in the moment of doing it and take care of yourselves.